Hey, this is Yossi, I run a small investment firm that specializes in rate investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about two rates that I sold recently. And simultaneously, I'm gonna to talk to you about two rates that I've been buying. But before I get into it, I want to let you know that we just launched a Black Friday sale for our REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord. This is our biggest sale of the year. There is a large discount, there's a two week free trial, and I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. So the first REIT that we sold recently is called UMH Properties. Its sticker symbol is UMH. This is a REIT that specializes in manufactured housing communities. I've owned it for many years. I've interviewed their management team several times. And earlier this year, I even got to meet them in person. But over the past six months, UMH has massively outperformed its close peer, Sun Communities. As a result, both REITs are now down about as much since hitting their all-time highs in early 2022. However, during the same time period, some communities grew its FFO per share by about 10%, even as UMH failed to grow, and as a result, both REITs are now priced at about the same valuations. But the interesting thing here is that despite trading at roughly the same valuation, Sun Communities is actually a better REIT in many ways. The first thing here is that it owns better properties. Sun Communities typically focuses on the higher quality spectrum of the manufactured housing market, and this is well reflected in its occupancy rate, which is really high at about 95%. UMH, on the other hand, typically focuses on lower quality communities that it can buy at cheap valuations and then turn around. They can be good investments as well, but they are riskier, they enjoy lower barriers to entry, and this is reflected in its lower occupancy rates, which is typically in the high 80s. Then the second thing is that Sun Communities enjoy a stronger balance sheet that's investment grade rated, it has a triple B credit rating, and no debt maturities until 2026. UMH, on the other hand, uses a bit more debt, it also uses a lot of preferred equity, and it has debt maturities coming earlier than those of Sun Communities. Then the third thing is that some communities is better managed in my opinion. The management is clearly focused on growing on a per sheer basis and they have a far better track record than that of UMH. That doesn't mean that the track record of UMH is poor, it's actually pretty good, but it's not as good as that of some communities and after meeting their management earlier this year, I've lost some confidence in their future growth prospects. Then the fourth thing to consider here is that Sun Communities is a far larger REIT which lowers risks because it's better diversified, it enjoys better economies of scale, and it has better access to capital. This is typically rewarded with a higher valuation in the public market, but since there is no premium in this specific case, I think that Sun Communities is more opportunistic. And then the last major difference is that Sun Communities is retaining about half of its cash flow to self-fund its growth. UMH, on the other hand, is paying out its entire cash flow in the form of dividends and as a result it's offering a nice dividend yield, but it's not able to self-fund its growth and it's forced to keep issuing new shares to buy additional properties. The management claims that its new investments are going to be accretive on a per share basis, but very often they're actually dilutive in the first years because it takes time to turn around properties and as a result the investment thesis is quite a bit more complex. I think that the investment thesis of Sun Communities is a lot easier for the market to understand because its growth rate is a lot more consistent on a per share basis and therefore I predict that Sun Communities is also going to recover faster than UMH from this recent crash. So to put it simply, I believe that Sun Communities is a higher quality of REIT than UMH properties and yet they are priced at comparable valuations and therefore I don't see a point in owning UMH anymore. I believe that both REITs are ultimately discounted here, but the risk reward of Sun Communities is superior. I estimate that the REIT has about 50% upside potential, and while you wait, the company keeps growing its cash flow at a mid to high single digit, and it also pays a 3% dividend yield. Finally, it's interesting to know that the activist REIT investment firm Lannan Buildings also just recently initiated a position in the company. This is encouraging because it shows that I'm not the only one who's seeing the opportunity following the recent dip. Sorry to interrupt you for a second, but if you think that this content is valuable, it really helped me a lot if you click the like button. Thank you so much for all your support. And then the second read that I would sell is called Boston Properties. Its ticker symbol is BXP. This is the blue chip of the office REIT peer group and it's gaining a lot of attention following its recent crash because it's now priced at a historically low valuation multiple and high dividend yield. But despite this recent crash, the company is actually doing fairly well. It owns Class A properties, it has a pretty good balance sheet, and the management has a really good track record. So I agree that Boston Properties is perhaps getting opportunistic at these levels. 
but even then I'm not a buyer of the company and in fact if I own the position I would consider selling it and there's one main reason for this. There's another REIT called Alexandria Real Estate that's far superior in quality but it's down just as much as Boston Properties. Just like in the case of Sun Communities and UMH Properties, now Boston and Alexandria also trade at relatively similar valuations but Alexandria is far superior in quality. The first thing here is that it owns far better assets. Alexandria owns life science properties which may look like office buildings from the outside but they're actually far safer, they require less capex, less tenant improvements and they enjoy far more consistent growth prospects. They are less impacted by the growing trend of remote work and they're also more resilient to recessions. Moreover, the rents of Alexandria are today deeply below market and this offers a predictable path to future growth and on top of that its lease is at triple net, reducing the need for capex and they also include 3% annual rent escalations. Then secondly, Alexandria also has a far better balance sheet with lower leverage, longer debt maturities, less debt coming during the coming years and because its assets also enjoy steady rent growth prospects, it's also easier to refinance this debt. And then finally, Alexandria has a far better track record than Boston Properties. It has massively outperformed it over the past decades. And I don't expect this trend to reverse anytime soon, given that Alexandria has better assets, a stronger balance sheet, better growth prospects, and the valuations are today quite similar. So here you really need to ask yourself, why would you buy Boston Properties when you just could buy Alexandria Real Estate, which is safer and more rewarding, in my opinion? So the whole point of this video was to show you that there are some very interesting capital recycling opportunities in the REIT sector. My capital is limited and will much rather put it to work in Alexandria and Sun Communities rather than Boston Properties and UMH. Now if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio feel free to join High Yield Landlord which is my REIT newsletter for a two week free trial. As I noted earlier we are currently offering a big discount for Black Friday and I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And then once more, if you could please click the like button, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.